we'll hit start. I'd like to take a second or two to address a comment that was made on a social media post uh, detailing progress of a public records request that I've submitted while trying to determine the extent of external influence in the disciplinary actions taken against an elementary school principal in Vestavia Hills. But before I get to that, I'd like to offer a very brief retelling of the known facts. Lauren Dressback, principal of Cahaba Heights Elementary School, signed a three-year contract extension in the spring of last year. In January of this year, she came out to the superintendent as a lesbian. In February, she went on a first date with a woman, and two weeks later, she shared pictures of her date with three work colleagues. When she shared it with a fourth colleague, the interaction was recorded on a cell phone. One week later, the assistant superintendent, Amy Rainey, and executive director of personnel, Meredith Hansen, showed up in her office, accused her of sharing explicit details, and escorted her out of the building. The most explicit of the three pictures shows a kiss on the cheek. And in fact, it is less explicit than the framed picture that was resting on the office bookshelf behind Rainey and Hansen, a picture of Lauren and her ex-husband, Shane, kissing. The only substantive difference is that the photo on Lauren's phone featured a black woman delivering a kiss on the cheek rather than a white man delivering one to the lips. For several weeks, the elementary school is left with no principal and no explanation. This May, her contract was amended, transferring her to the alternative school. That contract is now signed and notarized, but she still hasn't been able to collect her things, including that picture of Shane on her bookshelf or been able to visit her new workplace in the basement of the high school. She is still, to this day, barred from being on Board of Education property or speaking to any system employee. So now let's get to the comment. But they, I'm sure he means Lauren Dressback supporters that believe she was unfairly terminated, the vast majority of whom, including myself, believe it was retaliation for her coming out of the closet. And he's completely correct in that I would absolutely admit if I'd made a mistake. But absent being told identical lies from multiple sources, the chance of me having made this mistake is small. Lauren Dressback has an active EEOC complaint that is being adjudicated and speaking out or going on the record with a reporter does nothing to help her case and could only do potential harm. I hope that she can tell her own story soon, but Vestavia City Schools is still her employer, and it's not clear whether that could be considered cause for termination of her contract. She is three years shy of fully vesting her retirement, and she has two years left on her current contract. Completing the terms of her amended contract is essential for her to qualify for the benefits that she has rightfully earned. And until she has complete assurances that the school system cannot retaliate against her for speaking out, her voice is silenced, possibly for as long as the next two years. The Vestavia Hills Board of Education is silent too, but do not let them conflate policy with legal limitation. There's nothing, no law barring the superintendent's office or Board of Education from sharing the truth. And make no mistake, they benefit from the silence. It turns the crank of the rumor mill, steadily grinding away Lauren Dressback's reputation, and I believe that's fully intentional. The silence is deliberate and it's cruel. Telling the entire truth of what happened might hurt Lauren Dressback's reputation a little and, and perhaps even being embarrassing, but that's nothing compared to demolishing silence. The truth will be devastating to the reputation of the people involved in crafting the original complaint, the people investigating it, and everyone involved in metering out the discipline. They couldn't possibly damage her reputation more with truth than they are doing with pretentious restraint. Outlawed lies couldn't be worse. There is no financial incentive for the Board of Education to remain silent. That ship's already sailed. In addition to paying a high salary for an unnecessary position, yet again at the virtual school or alternative school, we, the taxpayers, will be paying a substantial settlement and also bearing the, the legal fees for both sides. Insurance will probably cover a portion, but that will eventually manifest as higher premiums. So we deserve to hear the entire truth from the mouths of those who manufactured the disaster, but we won't. 
silence and darkness is their preference because accountability doesn't go there. Lauren Dressback deserves better. We deserve better. And it's time for change.